It was a sad day. I'm not gonna lie. Of course, you just lost a quarter of a million dollars. I got scammed, and now things are about to get interesting because. Oh shit! One night, I'm out in LA at Boa, Boa Steakhouse, and I run into this guy. He is at one of the top steakhouses in LA with his family feeding them. This is after one month of him ghosting me. So in my head, I'm like, yo, I just lost 250K. And yo, this guy's right in front of me Holy at one of the most expensive shit. steakhouses. What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode four of All Grown Up. Yes, sir. I can't believe we're on episode four. Dude, we're four weeks uh, in. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you so much for returning to another episode and showing us a tremendous amount of support. Once again, I can't even comprehend the crazy support, the amazing words you guys coming back just just, just the love about. the love in general you guys have been going crazy especially the youtube i've seen the youtube number has been going up that's guys. insane like it's a new channel and i think the videos are almost hitting a mil but besides that yep guys we are going to be dropping the podcast episodes on podcasting platforms now first yes. and it comes with some benefits Ooh. like you guys have been showing us love on youtube of course we appreciate that but I would appreciate if you guys also listen to it on like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all podcasting platforms because there are going to be giveaways yep. and there's going to be exclusive content on the ones that you could actually listen to. We're starting off today's episode with a big giveaway. One yes. of my biggest giveaways. It's finally time. We have to give back to you guys. Of course. So if you've ever wanted to meet Noah and I, yep. this is your time because yes, we are flying out to huge supporters a boy and a girl to be featured in one of my youtube videos and all you have to do is listen to the audio part of the podcast again on all podcasting platforms and you have to listen to it all the way through because there's a quiz Ooh. that we're going to be giving to you guys See, guys usually quizzes are hard like in school but this is a fun quiz so don't be worried it's more fun you know it's about noah and i and it's about the episode and we just like to have you guys engaged as much as possible so Definitely. on all of our platforms like tiktok twitter instagram we're going to be showing you guys how to enter and you're going to be taking a quiz on the episode and then if you pass the quiz you're going to be entered into a raffle and two people are going to be picked to be flown out to my house. That's so sick, bro. I'm and so excited for this. We're going to put you in a YouTube video and we're going to have some fun. We're going to hang out for the day and take you out to some lunch, dinner, and it's going to be a great time. And there's always a way to listen to this podcast. You can listen on the way to work while hitting the gym. You know, there's Going so many opportunities, sleep. so many opportunities. So go ahead and stream it down below. Thank you guys. We, uh, once again, just the support mind blowing. I'm super happy that we finally have a platform where we could talk yep. and just show you guys everything about our life and behind I'm, the scenes. I'm starting to feel more comfortable. I don't know if like you are too, now that we're in a setting like this, like Bro. I feel way more like comfortable talking and just being able to express myself. Like it's, it's, it's becoming a thing where it's just like, you don't have to think about it anymore. Which exactly. Is and I like how, like when we step into this room, like we just start feeling comfortable to where yeah. we can just talk about anything. We feel loose. We feel comfortable. We feel like we could brainstorm stuff. And Thanks. it just honestly, it's amazing. It's a blessing. We also switched out our mics because once again, we yeah. read all your comments. Um, we got the shirt SM7s, I think. I don't know what they are. But I don't know the exact one. They're like but... the number one mics for podcasts yep. and of course we want the best of the best quality so hopefully the quality is the best hopefully we saw... you hear the bass in my voice hello hello i am your father <laughs> <laughs> do i sound do i actually have a good deep voice Let's try it <clears throat> yo what's going on guys should we just start talking like this the whole episode i think we'd lose all of our fans <laughs> i think uh, i'd pull like 10 times more girls if i talk like this no honestly when you're sick your voice like it yo. actually sounds more deep and like hot but girls then, love when you wake up and facetime them I've yeah noticed. it's like hey what, hey, what up? up baby how you feeling what, what you, you what you been on <laughs> <laughs> yo all right look. Uh, all right let's get into episode four of all grown up hey dun, 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 dun. that's the impossible dun, dun, dun. really I think so. oh yeah dun. Dun, dun, dun. so we are getting into the episode with a real life update hey yo i'm just gonna mention we just came back from las vegas we had a great time celebrating we did it for the podcast it was a cool time it was amazing guys we literally went to vegas just to celebrate the launch of the podcast yep um you know have a good time finally have our first like trip after working very hard in la and yep. honestly it was much needed once Definitely. again Met a ton of fans there, and it's just crazy how, like, everywhere we go, like, whether it's Arizona, Vegas. So much love. Dubai. So much love. Yeah. That's anywhere, insane. like, we have fan love, and we do appreciate that. So, 
Um, Vegas was fun. Yeah, Alex won ten thousand dollars in Vegas, bro. How? Listen, Alex. Like I didn't think he had the brain cells to comprehend what was going on at the table, but homie guys, won ten racks. Phase Adapt won ten thousand dollars gambling. <sighs> I put in $100 because I'm scared. <laughs> like, I don't gamble, and, like, I'm scared to lose my money. So I put in $100, and then I won, like, 300 And then at the end of the night, I just put the 300 in, and then I just lost it. And I'm like, okay, I'm never touching this again. Me and you went, I think it was at, like, what, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. We went back to the hotel. We're like, yo, let's just throw all our money. Like, we, we only had a couple chips left from the last yeah, table like we, we were on. Yeah, we didn't have, like, we're not doing, like, $10,000. No, 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 never that. But, you know, we lost our money. It's fine. We had a good time, and uh, it, was a, it was just a great time in general. It was great, and last night... I actually had my first ever paparazzi encounter. Yes. And it was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> I didn't think that was ever going to happen. I always like told myself when I would see that. And if they ever came up to me, I would just be like, yo, is this really happening? I think it was so sudden though. Like you didn't really expect it. He Not only just all. popped out of nowhere, like behind a tree or some shit. I don't even know, but he was like gassing me up. He's like, dude, why wouldn't paparazzi hit you up? Like you, you have 19 million subs. I'm like, dude, stop, stop. <laughs> but yeah, it was crazy because like I was caught off guard and he was just asking me about like, I think like the Chinese government and how they're like cracking down on gaming or like they don't like gaming i forgot Yo, exactly what he was saying he but... kind of came with some like really big facts and keep in mind we just came back from like a dinner like we just walked out of like a steakhouse so we were kind of just caught off guard but i think he was talking about like how yeah like chinese government are cracking down on gaming because they don't want so many people like tied into their like you know their consoles all, all the yeah time. because they said it like affects their life you yeah. know so I don't know. I was caught off guard and i was just like yo like <laughs> that's cool whatever but I, I told him i'm like you know what like Gamers are lit. I'm a gamer myself. I blew up from gaming. And the one thing to keep it 100% real is like, if you have a passion for gaming, you just have to make sure that you have a backup option because 100%. not everyone is going to blow up. Not yeah. everyone's going to get famous off of it. Obviously, if you have a passion for it, 1 million percent go for Pursue it. Pursue it 100%. But definitely have like school as backup or a job. Like I've met a lot of people that stream, but then they have their main job and streaming is their second job. But guess what? If that takes off, then. They consider quitting your other job, but hey, if it makes sense, it makes sense. Just don't like go all into like, oh, I'm going to be a streamer and like you're not really making that much money because that's not a smart decision. Yeah, exactly. So as long as you're smart with it, um, you know, back in school, like I said, I played all the time, but yeah. I just had a vision. Yeah. And when you know, you know, though, I feel like, yeah, like if you have a gut feeling like, damn, this might work out and like, I really think this could work, then do it. But the thing is, I feel like what homie was trying to tell you last night, it's like everything is in balance. Like people are like, oh, like my husband's always playing so much video games or like my kids always on the system. It's like, that's cool. Let them do what they want to do if they're having fun with it. But obviously like balance, real, real life is still a thing. Like you could go yeah. outside, you know, get active, just make sure you're balancing whatever you're doing. It doesn't even have to be video games. Yeah. If you have a wife and kids and you're addicted to video games, of course, just take some time to spend time with the family. Definitely. And, important. And then, obviously, like, at night when, like, the kids are asleep, the wife is going to bed. Hey, hey. That's go mode for that's you. That's the boys right that, there. That's where you, you hang with the boys. <laughs> you get a few dubs on Warzone and you call get, it a night. Get a little toxic. Yo, yeah, okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> Stop. The toxic COD community, bro. I, <laughs> hey, I came from a toxic COD community. Hey, back when it was, like, toxic. <laughs> toxic, toxic. It was crazy. Like, I don't know if I would. I would definitely survive an MW2 lobby nowadays. One hundred percent. Obviously, I came from it, but yeah. they go crazy. No, I think like it molded <laughs> us. No it, it molded us to who we are today because like we were getting shit talk when we were like fucking ten, bro. Shoot a gun, dog. Learn how to fucking game. shoot a gun. Fucking you fucking riot shield. shield. What else? Oh, riot shield. shield. I'm a pussy that use riot shield. Like grown ass men would be online just. You fucking mother, uh, 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 it's like so saying bad. the worst type of shit, and we're just ten years old type shit. Like we're like, so how do are we, we say to... that back? Yeah, what? yeah, for real. But it definitely like got us some thick skin. But anyway, speaking of the dinner, it was a good dinner. Yeah. Any up? Oh my god, dude! You fucking, you went in there with a bodysuit. Yo. So yeah, I just recently made a video. I thought it'd be funny because you know I'm a skinny guy. Um, I'm tired of people calling me out for being skinny, so I had a little body transformation. <laughs> so guys, this dude wore like one of those like body <laughs> skins that like make you look built. And let me tell you, it was the most uncomfortable shit in the world. It was silicone that sticks to your skin, and it was like rubber, and it weighed like five pounds. No, ten pounds. Ten, probably like. 10 it was pounds. actually really heavy, but <laughs> Noah was actually picking up some girls in Boa Steakhouse. Like this is one of the most fancy restaurants in LA. Yeah, paparazzi literally got him there. TikTokers go there. YouTubers, like celebrities, go there. Elon Musk. 
else goes there? Justin Bieber was there last time. I like, love you, Justin Bieber. Hey, Seriously, I love you. He really does. Listen, um, but yeah, so Noah had like a girl all up on him. Like, <laughs> oh, I love this. Like, <laughs> and everyone was just staring at him. And I'm like, I don't know how you have the balls to do this. Dude, thing. from afar, you said it looked real too. <laughs> Everyone was staring, and I would go up to them. I'm like, did you guys think that was real? They're like, bro, we thought there was a shirtless guy. No like, way. Even the workers. But everyone was so chill about it. But <laughs> that's what I love about this guy. He's literally just a clown. Hey, but honestly, like, I love that we just don't care about stuff like that anymore. Like, yeah. you remember there was a point in your career, like, I bet when you first started doing YouTube that you were very, like, nervous to do certain things yeah but now i feel like you could just do anything now if i know that it's gonna make for a good video and it's gonna make people laugh yeah i will put all the nerves aside even though i still do get nervous Definitely. i don't i don't put i think them aside, that's actually. a day-to-day -day thing like some days you'll wake up like confident some days you'll be like oh like i don't know if i want to do this like kind of questioning yourself but you always like go all out on videos which i will give you i gotta do that man anything for the fans hey rugrats we love you <laughs> <laughs> speaking of fans yeah i think okay very soon. Yeah. Very soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should do an all grown up pop up. Oh my God. I know yes. a thing or two about pop ups, guys. My first ever pop up in Santa Ana uh -huh. had 8,000 people show up. There was people camping outside the night before. And the owners of the place that let us use it, I think it was like Infamous Motor Group. Yeah. They're really cool people. They let us like use their warehouse. They didn't think there was going to be like Dude, a lot of people. Dude, they underestimated it so Bro, mad. I was so scared. I'm like, what if like 50 people show up? And they're like, dog, there's 50 people in line the night before. I was like, okay. So that, that might seem crazy. The next day came by and like we're on our way to Santa Ana. And like I'm getting texts like, yo, there's at least 2,000 people here. 3,000 people here. 4,000 people here. People here. There's videos of us in the sprinter van of fans uh -huh. lined up by the freeway. They were, they were on Blocks the freeway. Away. Blocks away. Like, literally, the exit ramp of a freeway, there was fans lined up on the side. That's crazy. And we showed up. It was one of the hottest days ever. Do you remember that? No, I remember. I, I remember it was, like, me and your whole family in that one sprinter. And just to get in, like, people were already mobbing the sprinter. Dude, the on sprinter the way in there. was, like, it was and so scary. on top of that, so, obviously, everyone that was there was a big, huge rug fan. But there's so many other people that pulled up. I think half of the phase members pulled yep. up. Your family pulled up. Everyone pulled up. So imagine all you guys in one area. Like, dude. Dude, all the I feel support, like it was more than 8,000 people. It was like 8 to 10K from dude, what I remember. Dude. Um, And then at the very end, I went on top of the roof. That because, was the most iconic thing of all Dude, time. it was very iconic. There's a GIF or GIF uh -huh. um, where I was on the roof and I put my hands out. And there's like a bunch of fans down there. It was like the <laughs> craziest thing ever um sadly got shut down after like an hour of course to like danger yeah like, you know there was a well, lot of like yeah there's so many people like mobbing and like fire hazards trying to get in because at one point they had to shut it down like the inside it was like kino der toten bro like the map yeah it was <laughs> yeah. like the zombies bro. literally it was, lit. <laughs> it was actually cool but um but yeah i got shut down that was my first ever pop-up so i was like after that i was like no way that all those people came to see me like that's so you do realize if we were to do another one now with agu and now that you're bigger like this shit's gonna be some some hectic shit guys i'm thinking of doing another one but we're gonna add a lot more stuff we're gonna be more like you know cautious now we know oh, that definitely. there's gonna be a lot of people that'll more show planning up. into it for sure more planning but i want to make it cool where like we have like maybe a half court basketball court where like i could 1v1 fans hey hey take Anything. some ankles yeah exactly take some ankles you know a lot of my fans call me out in basketball but you guys just don't want the smoke yeah show them what's up so i was thinking of doing that you know maybe have some arcade games have some merch all the girls that are over 18 hit my line when you're there <laughs> you know what i'm saying we're gonna have like some food we'll have everything we'll have the phase guys pull up we'll have my family pull up and i think we could do it in a bigger attraction maybe even like at this point like an arena yo dude like why not just do it somewhere at like staples center that would be the sickest shit of all time so i don't know if you guys want to see something like that please let me know because i would love to do pop-ups any chance that i can to meet my fans please let us know because we will make it happen yep phase clan will help us and yes, sir and all my family like everyone will be there so <laughs> I'm down for an all grown up pop up. Definitely coming soon. Yes, sir. Honestly, meeting our fans is amazing because they're all very respectful, genuine. I wouldn't say all of them. 
There's yeah. some disrespectful fans. Well, yeah. I but mean, for the most part, 100%, I would say like 99% of fans. Yeah, no, definitely like when we talked about the hotel scandal of like, yeah. there was people like honking their horns. There's but like, we still love you guys nonetheless. Like obviously like things happen, but yeah, all your all your fans are pretty And I, I just remembered that about three years ago, I flew out two fans because I think they want to give away. And shout out to Zach and Michelle, man. You guys were amazing. Your whole family was amazing. Very respectful and genuine. And like, we just had a great time. So that's why I wanted to do this again and fly out two more fans. Yep. And honestly, just meeting you guys and seeing that, like, how, how you guys talk to us and how you guys like interact with us and how we interact back. It's like, it's a, it's like a friendship level. It's not. I would say family at this point. Yeah, exactly. Like I always say this. It's like when I talk to you guys, I want it to seem like you're talking to one of your friends or one of your family members because we'll always make you feel comfortable. If you're ever nervous, I will make sure that you are you are not nervous, and I'll make sure you'll walk away with like a smile on your face. And that's what I love about it. It's like when I meet you guys, it's never awkward. It's it's always like all love, and I love having genuine combos. Like we actually talk about certain things. Like yeah. what are you what are you up to today? Like. Are you guys heading here? Like, are you guys going to the mall? We literally do life updates with your fans. Like, literally. This is so sick. Because I'm actually curious. Like, oh, like, did you come to the mall just to see me? Or are you guys shopping around? What do you guys have planned It's a tonight? genuine, real connection. That's what I like about just people in general that we interact with. It's like yeah. when you can feel that, like, someone is appreciating you and you appreciate them. It's just a genuine connection and genuine combo. It's like, damn, like, that's so sick. And, and most of the time with your fans, it's like that. Yeah, and it's crazy because, like, I feel like a lot of our supporters, like, expect us to not talk to them or expect us to be more like yeah picture quick or something like that or like at least just, yeah let's take a not. picture but i always like i said like i want them walking away like shocked like oh my god i just had a full-blown combo with rug yeah and it's like yeah like that's that's i love that shit because that's what we do it for at the end of the day we don't do it just to be like oh we don't want to take a picture with someone nah, no bro that's the whole not. point the whole point is to interact with you guys and show our love back because you show so much love to us and it's just crazy because in LA and just a, a lot of like, I, not a, I don't know. I don't want to say a lot, but <laughs> yeah. some influencers that I know, like literally it's, it's fucking cringe are douchebags to their fans. You guys know who we're talking about. I mean, Do like, they? I, I feel like you can easily tell when someone's not genuine. Yeah. Like sometimes you could just tell off the bat, like through content or like, there'll be like actual videos that people take, like, yeah, it's like, like of people not, or like, uh, influencers not wanting to take pictures or like, I kind feel of being like rude. when you're fake or when you're not genuine, it, it shows w either way. Like somehow you're going to find out that that person's like not who they say they are because when you keep it real 100% of the time and you're being genuine, there's nothing you have to worry about. Listen in LA, especially though. I'm just saying like, it's just cringe out here. Just know we love you guys. And All if you time. ever see us in person, please don't hesitate to come up. Don't hesitate to ask for a picture. And just don't ask me to buy you a car. I'm sorry. Hey, like hey I, okay. That's where we draw the line. Okay? <laughs> no, there was a time I think um, a fan came up to me and would just ask me to buy him a car. And I was like, I was laughing at first, but I think he really like kept pushing the issue. I think it's because like, obviously you give away so much stuff in your videos that people will like just think it's like, oh, Rugs got it like that. Like, let me just get a car real quick. When the time is right, I would love to buy cars for my fans. 100% where you're giving away one at 20 I've, mil. I've, yeah, I'm giving a car away at 20 mil. I'm giving 20 PS5s. 20 iPhone 12s, a thousand dollars to 10 people, a car, and then a bunch of chug rug to someone. So speaking um, of chug rug, bro, I need one. Dude, I know I don't have one right now. <laughs> so guys, we are introducing this new segment on All Grown Up called How To. Ooh. It's kind of like, like fact check. Yeah. When we did that fact check part, we are gonna be doing a how to, and today's topic is how to save money or spend money. I love that. And I have a lot of experience with that, yes, whether it's spending a little bit of money or spending a lot of money, but I want to give you guys my advice and my personal experience because I've been through it all. I've bought crazy stuff. I bought little things and I just want to show you guys how it affects me, how it has affected me and how I am today because a lot of people ask about my businesses, how a lot of people think I, I'm like going broke. <laughs> a lot of people think a lot of things about my finances and I would love to openly talk about it because I love talking about business and I, I'd love for you guys to hear what I have to say because a lot of people see me and you know, you've seen that I bought a lot of cars in the past. I used to buy a bunch of fancy clothes and like 
I used to actually go through a phase where I would just spend a lot of money on unnecessary things. I think that's the initial phase, though. It's like you start getting some money and you're like, hey, I can finally splurge on myself. It's a good thing. And but I don't want people you don't to, always should stay in that phase. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't want people to think that that's what determines my personality. No, you no, know what I mean? No, like, I think there's some people that get a mix that like I, I show off my personality. Like people know me as the Lambo guy. But that's not what I want. Of course. But it's just a part of me. You know, it's like it's more just like a part like, oh, this YouTuber has a Lamborghini. But it's accomplishments, I think. It's yeah, like, it's definitely. like a trophy. It's like you buy a house. It's like you're not going to not want to show your house. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So I want to start at the very top and I want to talk about houses that I have bought yeah. and certain properties that I have bought. So with houses is a great investment. When you purchase a house, you don't the money doesn't go away. The money doesn't disappear. It's in the house. So based like off in of, one of the rooms, huh? It's like in one of the rooms. Yeah. It's like hidden underground. It's like a scavenger hunt. kind exactly. of Exactly. Cool. <laughs> when you purchase a house, it's an investment as a lot of people may know. And the value of houses go up as the years go by. You know, a lot of people say this and I always stand by it, but property is like the best investment. I know a lot of people that do stocks and stuff, but I'm not into that. And you don't do crypto either. No. And I don't get that stuff, which is why I would never invest my time into stuff like that or yeah. money since we're talking about money, but yeah. pretty much I've purchased. So my first ever house was the two story house on the golf course. Um, and that was my biggest accomplishment. I purchased that at age 19. That's insane. It was like a Congrats again. Thank you. That's huge. It was like a $2 million house. And once again, <laughs> that money doesn't go away. Like right now, so that house is probably worth like $2.6 million. You know what I mean? So like in the course of three to four years, it's gone up by like 600 k That's insane. So if you do sell that house, wow. you will pocket 600 k So obviously excluding like fees and stuff, but... um. A lot of people that don't know this about me and this is my favorite thing of all time is I invest in apartment rental properties. What I do guys, um, I actually buy a bunch of apartment units. I think as of right now, I'm at 13 and my goal is to reach like a hundred hopefully soon. So pretty much I have a property manager and we rent out apartments to people and you know, we collect rent at the end of the month and that's like a steady passive income. Definitely. And I'm always, always about property because obviously like with stocks, it goes up and down. Yeah. And this is not to trash on anyone that does stocks because that's a lot of people make big money. Different investments for every like person. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like personal preference. Yeah. It's personal preference. But to me, I, I think I want to retire off of like properties. Like that's smart. The money that I make from YouTube, like, yeah, sometimes I'll, you know, buy a nice shirt, buy nice clothes, buy an expensive dinner. Because you deserve it. Yeah. But at the end of the day a lot of that money that I make goes into property and into my videos. I reinvest my money into my videos to make better content. 100%. No, that's good. I feel like most people that are like starting to make some money or like becoming old enough to like just begin making money, like should be able to listen to this and take something from it because this guy, like I've seen behind the scenes on stuff that you buy and like you never buy anything that's like dumb. I feel like you don't go and buy like a $30,000 watch randomly for yeah. no reason, but I feel like you rather would invest that into something that's going to make you more money over time. Exactly. So for those who don't know, a lot of people that watch my channel do know, but I've gone through three Lamborghinis and this is not intended to flex whatsoever, but I've gone through three Lambos. And when I look back at it, it's really cool because I've made a lot of dope videos, you know, picking up Uber riders in my Lambo, wrapping Lamborghinis. Like it's super, super sick. I've made a lot of dope content with it and I personally enjoyed it. But after looking back, I'm like, dang, three Lambos, I think it totals to be around like $800,000. And at the end of the day, Jesus. like cars depreciate. There's some cars that don't depreciate, but obviously with Lambos and stuff, once you take it off the lot, the value goes down. But the only difference is that when I make videos with the Lambo, it's kind of like an investment because is. the money that you get from that video could go back into the Lambo. But that was when I was like, dumb guys, I'm very into... I'm very indecisive. So like I'll get a Lambo and then I'll be like, Oh, I wanted this one. And like, mm -hmm. it sounds so stupid. And I actually cringe when I think about that because I'm so different now and I've matured to think like, okay, like I don't need this. And like, yeah, it was fun to have when I was like, like, you know, on the come up and like, I, I don't know, it was fun. But when I think about it now, I'm just like, dang, I really have been stupid with my money in the past. And, and you've been smart cars. too. It, it's a balance. Exactly. You know? Cause while I was buying those cars, I was also buying properties. Yeah. So 
Um, yeah, I've gone through a lot of cars. I've gifted cars, which I don't. You've gifted think... me a car. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. I've gifted you a car. I've gifted my mom a car. I've gifted Kaylin a car. I've gifted a lot of people cars, but that's not something that I look back at and say no, like because it's yeah. a gift. Yeah. So that is something that I always just like. I'm like, okay, that's kind of an investment in Definitely. a relationship. One hundred percent. So and also invest in yourself. That's another thing. Like money aside, like even with money, it's like when you are trying to do a little self-care day, you know what I'm saying? Like invest in yourself as well, you know? Spend we money on a spa that. day. Yeah, me and Brian literally just got a massage. We get, oh my God, that felt so good. It's not girly to go get a mani-pedi. Listen, it's listen. It's not girly to get a massage and it's not girly to get a facial. Everyone it's thinks both. it's feminine that people like men or males like to take care of themselves. Like that shit is so whack to me. Like, bro, why wouldn't I want to glow in the sun? You know what I'm saying? Bro, I will do that every week for the rest of my life. Same. Like, at least a massage. Just take care of yourselves. Definitely. Um... So another thing that I want to talk about with my money is fashion and clothes and jewelry. And I went through a phase of buying a bunch of Gucci. A lot of people know that. And when I look back at it again, hated it. I was like, dude, it's cool. It's good fashion. But it's like I could have done a lot better with that money. Um, right now, like if I do see something that I like at the mall, like I'm not going to lie, I'll probably buy it, but yeah. I, it's never going to be to the extent that I used to do. I used to actually go to the mall. I think I feel like you used to plan your trips like, oh, this weekend I'm going to go to the mall, but I feel like now it's just like spontaneous. Like, yeah, we're it's there, like if we're, we're at there. the mall and we see something and it's like, oh, cool, I might buy that, yeah. but I'll never go out of my way, guys. I kid you not, I used to spend Ooh, I don't want to like know. 5K every like week or two on clothes. And then again, I realized yo this ain't it yeah. right now if, if you guys watch my videos you'll see that i'll be wearing the same like gucci shirt i wore like three years ago because i don't purchase new ones yeah and like i'm just like I, they're clothes at the end of the day like i'm just gonna wear them to begin with i don't need the new and updated style Facts. Like, it obviously it's cool if like we're trying to take an instagram picture and it's like let me get a that's new another outfit. investment though if you really think about exactly. it exactly so if you want to have a nice fit for the gram like why not but i feel like you don't really have to overthink like, oh, should I buy this? Should I not? It's like, you know, it's like, okay, I can, I haven't done this in a while. I haven't bought myself something nice. Like I'll buy this, but it's not something that you go out of the way. It's like, oh, like I'm going to drop 10 K on this just cause I can. You know exactly. I, mean? I feel like I just grew out of that. Like, like just buying materialistic things. I feel like I grew out of it. Once again, it was a phase when I was younger and I started seeing money. I'm like, yo, I want a Lambo. I want Gucci. But I think now that I'm older and yeah. starting to realize where money should really go and Definitely. where um, I could set myself up for the future, which is to me property to other people. It could be something different, but my advice is property is amazing. When I talk about property, it makes me so excited. Like it gets right you horny, now, bro. Yeah, it literally it, gets you horny. Honestly, like I, I, I get horny talking about property. I swear you do. <laughs> but like the thing is guys, I, I tell this to everyone. I will be way more excited getting like an eight unit apartment complex versus buying a Lamborghini now. You know, cause it's like, yo, I'm setting myself for the future. I'm a freaking, like, I'm a landlord, you know? I, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm, it's cool. It's you cool are a me. landlord. So yeah, guys, I, I just wanted to share that with you all. And nowadays I just want everyone to know that even when I spend like $20 on a meal, that's true. Like Postmates, it still hurts me. I'm like, yo, like, why am I spending $20 on a Postmates? Like, of course, like people say, oh, well you have the money. It's fine. But to me guys, I watch my money so well nowadays that like even like a $50 meal I'm just like damn I could have got like a $10 meal you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean yeah. so I, I actually want to show you guys like how horrible this is I need to figure this out I need to get a chef or something but I want to show you guys my like recent Postmates orders and this started happening when I moved to LA because uh -huh. like LA does run up the numbers on their like food though so ever since I moved to LA Postmates has been my best friend but I need you guys to see how robbed you get from Postmates <laughs> Okay, from a juice bar. Okay, okay. So just when you say that, juice in LA are, is already expensive, but. A juice bar, two items, guess. $40. $45 for an acai bowl and avocado toast because of all the different fees, delivery, tip, like service fee. I but, don't know hey, what Hey, hey, you could avoid that though. You could avoid it, that. Yeah, oh, bro. I'm not blaming Postmates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm blaming myself. Yeah. <laughs> I am lazy, okay? If I could, if there, there's an app that will have someone deliver food to you, I'll do it. But then again, it still hurts seeing it taken oh, out. Oh, 100%. Like, 
dang, I could have got that for $10. Yeah. And guys, I'm telling you, like, I don't care how much money I have that like $10 difference matters to me. Yeah. Save your money. I think like in general, when you came to LA, you didn't know how much you would be spending, but there's ways around it. Oh, I've definitely been spending way more in LA than San Diego because obviously when I lived with my parents, my mom would cook. Yeah. Different. Hey, Rizzo Maraca. Hey, you don't know what that is. I don't is. know what that is. Rice, beans, and like the... Oh my god, I need to go home. I'm going home this weekend. It's been two weeks since I've been to San Diego. And like, I actually miss my family a lot. Of course. You like, haven't seen them in a minute. Just like, being in that cozy... Being in that cozy environment and um, I drink my chai halib. It's a... Uh, You're addicted. It's a uh, tea and condensed milk. I've talked about this before. It's, it's like... Is it like boba? Like t- like that kind of consist- kind of, but it just tastes. I forgot what it tastes. So like. good, and just spending time with the family in the house, dinner, eating together, catching up. Like now, I'm finally experiencing being away from my family uh-huh. and actually getting to see them, and it makes me so much more excited. Yeah, it's a good thing though, because like when you don't see them for a while, it creates that separation that you want to go see them. Dude, I actually miss them. Like I'm not gonna lie, I can't wait to go. That's so sick. But um, what I also want to say is I learned a lot from you. For, from your investments because at this point now i'm starting to make better money i'm starting to make more money and it's like now that i see the path that you took it makes me think what i can do better you know what i mean like how i can invest my money and how i could like kind of follow your path and just make right decisions and i'd love to help with that yeah, yeah. that's the thing like me giving this advice is also to help young entrepreneurs or yeah. people that are learning to start like investing or like starting to make money where you should put your money definitely in my own opinion I think property is the way to go. You don't have to buy apartment units. Like there's flipping houses where you could purchase like a house for very cheap, put money into renovations and then flip the house for like another 100, 200 K. So I don't know. I think there's a lot. There's of ways so many, so many, you can make a brand, you can make a t-shirt brand. Yeah. There's so many things you can really invest in yourself, whatever you're passionate about. So my financial advice to everyone out there starting to make money, whether you just got your first job whether you know you have a summer job and you're an athlete, whatever it is, you're just started making money. My advice coming from someone who's made a lot of mistakes with money, save that money. Little Dicky. Yeah. Need to save that money. <laughs> hey, and do not make impulsive purchases. The amount of times I've seen like a rapper online with a sick Gucci jacket and I instantly went on gucci.com, purchased it for $3,000, and then when it came in, I'm like damn, I shouldn't have done that. It's instant gratification. Yeah. It's like, I want you guys to save your money and then also reinvest it in yourself. Whether it's, you know, maybe you find a business class that you have to pay to do, but you pay for that and they'll teach you how to make more money. So that is an investment in itself. It's not just investing in like large properties that like you need hundreds and thousands of dollars to do. There's so many different types of investments. Exactly. Like even if you're not making the most amount of money, if you save for a few months and literally don't go buy like these sneakers that your friends just got because you love them. Like you can do that in the future. Yeah. I always say this, like all the cars that I bought, I could have done that in the future. Not saying that I have a ton of regret with the cars because it did make for some good content that my fans enjoyed. So at the end of the day, it kind of was an investment. Yeah. But all I'm saying is save that money in a savings account that you will not touch. If you put money in every month, you'll have a fat chunk of something in your savings and you're like, yo, that's cool. I just did that. So you can use that money then smartly invest it, you know, like find something that you think will help you out in the future. It's like, if you're an athlete, Maybe you spend it on a trainer because it's going to make you better and that can help you in the future become a star yeah. and help you make more money. So at the end of it, it's all levels. You know, yeah. it's not going to be like from one level and you're going to jump to like, oh, I'm rich. Like you have to actually it's slowly. It's a slow climb. Yeah, it's a you, slow climb. You're not going to be at the top like immediately. Exactly. You slowly take those steps. And I'm just saying, I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes I did because I have a lot of financial mistakes. I've been ripped off before. I've lost a lot of money in in stupid investments I tried doing in the past, but that's why you should always talk to people. You should always make sure it's safe and just invest in yourself. If you believe in something and you're like, yo, I wanna take this class. Yo, I wanna- It's also investing your time too, wisely. Exactly. I just wanna talk about that time that I actually got scammed for $250,000. Jesus. A quarter of a million dollars. I got ripped off. I got scammed and it gets crazier as I tell the story. Like the things that you guys are about to hear is actually insane. Take the throne. So 
there was this app that was being created that I got pitched to by a couple of friends. I'm not the type to invest in apps. I'm not the type to invest in anything but properties now because yeah. I learned my lesson from this loss. Um, but yeah, it was a dope app. It was like a clothing app. Um, you know, something like streetwear fashion. It was something that I'm actually into, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so this actually caught my eye. Me and another phase member put $250,000 into the app because the guy who was wow. running it, you know, needed the funds to create the app. And yeah, we, we both put $250,000 each, not together. Oh, each, each. Oh my God. Me 250,000 and the other phase member 250,000. So what initially just made you trust this right away? Um, it, this guy had like a lot of connections with the people that I knew. Okay. So I was like, okay, it's not some random dude. I'm not an idiot. Yeah. But he was like in the mix, if okay. that makes sense. Um, put the money in and every few months, like it was taking a long time. Like he would tell me a date that this app would launch and then like the date would come by and I'm like, yo, what's the update? He's like, oh, another month. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I hate Another that. month comes by. Same thing. Same thing until... After like a year of me kind of just pushing it, like, yo, where the hell is this app? Completely disappeared. Completely just disappeared, ignored me, never talked to me again. I lost the money. The other phase member lost the money. And it was a sad day. I'm not going to lie. Of course, you just lost a quarter of a million dollars. I got scammed. And now things are about to get interesting because oh, shit. one night I'm out in LA at Boa, Boa Steakhouse. And I run into this guy. He is Good. at one of the top steakhouses in LA. Damn. With his family feeding them. This is after one month of him ghosting me. So in my head, I'm like, yo, I just lost 250K. And yo, this guy is right in front of me Holy at one of the most expensive shit. steakhouses. I using was using like, your money. That's what I'm saying. He was using my money for that. And I'm like, yo, like. I started like shaking of anger, but I'm not the type of guy to like go up to someone and press them. Like, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want, I'm not that type of guy to like do anything. Cause like, I just don't want that stress on me. Uh -huh. Even though I just lost a quarter million. I know people would disagree. Some people would have been like, yo, that dude would have been like fucking beat up or something, you know, but I'm not that type of guy. So you're not that guy, pal. I'm not that guy. Listen, after that. So I just ignored it. I was like, whatever, like, I hate this guy. I yeah. hate him. And then um, me and him like still followed each other on Twitter. Cause like, you know, I don't like think to just block people. Like, and then I started noticing he started posting materialistic things on his Twitter. Like he bought a new bag. He bought a new car, a new Porsche. He had bought a new car and posted it. He probably paid that in full too. That's what just I'm saying. So up. then he started posting these things. And as I'm seeing them, I'm like, yo, like, I don't know if he's doing this on purpose because he knows I'm going to see it, but he's using my money to purchase stuff for him. And I'm like, this Holy guy is so shit, fucked up. So I actually ended up messaging him. I'm like, yo, you're welcome for that car. Like you're welcome for that Louis bag. Like I'm like pissed because he literally has not talked to me. And this guy has the audacity to message me back threatening to kill me. What? Threatening to kill me if I don't stop messaging. The guy me. that stole money from you. The guy that it. stole money from me and started buying cars, bags, and all this stuff. After I confronted him in the messages, he threatened to kill me. That's fucked. So in my head, I'm just like, wait, so I'm the one in the wrong? Because I messaged you saying that, you know, like, you're welcome for all that shit that you That just bought? shows that he's a fucking pussy, though. Dude. Because if you think about it, like... When you know you did something wrong, like you're literally a coward. You're a pussy. Like, and then and then starting the to wrong. threaten to kill me makes you even more of a coward. One hundred percent. So after that, obviously, I just stopped talking to him. I'm like, Damn. you know what? I'm gonna just brush this off. I used it as motivation. Actually, I'm like, I lost this much money. That means I gotta go harder. Yeah. And it actually helped me because I'm like, yo, like losing a substantial amount of money as big as $250,000 makes you want to work harder. It makes 100%. you want to go harder and it makes you want to show that person that that's nothing. Like, you know what? Take that. That really ain't shit. I don't to care. You. Go ahead. Like little, take that. You're a little boy. Yeah. I don't care. Like it just, it was tough. It was like a few years back though, by the way, but I definitely learned a lot from it and it just, again, made me want to go harder. So that's the story of how I got scammed 250,000, but we're not done there because we got another story for you guys. Hey. Because we're getting into real story time. Right? Let's go. Story time. 
All right, Noah. <laughs> yeah. So do you remember we were at the richest kid in America's oh, house? Oh, do I? <laughs> Don Lad. Yep. Homie Shout out could my boy. Not, homie could not spell his name. His name is Donald, but he put his Instagram name as Don Lad. That's the funniest thing ever, guys. He actually misspelled his name on Instagram. His real name's Donald, and when he would tell us, like when we first met him, he's like, "Oh, uh, it's Donald on Instagram," and we're like, "We can't find it." And yeah. we looked at his phone, and it was spelled Don Lad. Homie's tripping. He literally spelled his name wrong on Instagram. Don Lad. And he didn't know, so that <laughs> became why, a thing. Yeah, that's the cool thing though. It became a thing. Like now we call him Don Lad. <laughs> his mom is Mom Lad. <laughs> mom Lad. Hey, honestly, that that family's really cool. I need to join the Lad Squad. Are you gonna leave Phase? Rug Lad. Rug lad? Rug lad? I like that. Hey. Hey. So one day we were at his house filming a collab, and they have a nice dog. They have a nice house. They have a really nice house, but pretty much uh, they have this really giant dog that is scary. It's not a dog, dude. It's like a wolf. Yeah, it's, it's like bigger than a dog. Like a wolf, and it's they like... told us like he's like not the friendliest. He, I think he was imported from like Russia. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but there was something about this dog that we couldn't be in contact with him or we couldn't he couldn't know that we were at the house or else it would be dangerous so when we went up to the house to film the dog was there and um i believe don lad's stepmom i don't know who it was but she's like okay guys hold on let me put the dog in the guest house so there's no problems and i'm like yo it's that serious um so dude this is scary i think it's like one of the craziest things it has to be so we're all just chilling in the backyard and out of nowhere, his stepmom is like, guys, run inside. Everyone go inside. Everyone run inside. It was like a like, freaking nuke happened in dude, MW2. We, we were freaking out. We're like, what the hell? What the hell? We ran inside. We had to go around. Their house was very big. So like the backyard, we were on one side. We had to run all the way to the other side. It's now like tell them what field. happens. Tell them what happens when we're running to the other side of the house. So we're running, right? Full speed thinking that this thing's behind us. As soon as we turn a corner... The dog's in our face. The dog is standing Sorry, there. sorry, not dog. Beast. The beast is in our face. He's like standing his ground. Like, you know how dogs look like very muscular? Oh, when they're like flexed up on you. I don't know if you guys seen the Sandlot, but when they get like attacked by that dog, yeah. it was the same situation. Exactly. The Sandlot is a great, great <laughs> reference. But pretty much the stepmom is there. This is a movie at this point. It's me, Noah, and Don Lad standing there frozen. Don the Lad. dog is staring at us. The stepmom is telling us, don't make a sudden movement. Yeah. And she's like trying to creep up on this dog, this beast. And this thing's like kind of walking towards us. Yes, at this it's point. like slowly coming towards us, like it's about to attack. And I'm there, like, yo, I'm I'm done. Like, it's over, my, yeah. My whole life is over. I was like, okay, how are we gonna finesse this one? Luckily, the stepmom was able to get to the dog, grab it, and like She's like, go, 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 go. <laughs> so we start running and we locked ourselves in the house. And I think we just left after that because we were scared. Oh, yeah. I think after that, we were traumatized. We're like, yo, why do you guys have dogs that are literally going to kill us? We almost got mauled. It's a cute dog, though. No, it's a beautiful looking dog. It was dog. actually like really, really beautiful, but vicious. Yeah, very. I guess um, they were saying that if like he doesn't know you, he's going to feel threatened obviously so we do not look threatening okay i don't think we would threaten the dog but i feel you to a dog like even a baby could be threatening true, to them. True. i don't know but that was insane again these are all like behind the scenes in our videos that we're just like we don't we don't film it but like it's just a crazy crazy story that we could finally share now it's just crazy that that happened and this also just takes me back to like kind of when you first started working for me and you know, the whole even, time era? Yeah, the time era of when you first started working for me. We used to like go to Dave & Buster's. Oh my god. A lot of people I don't know this, but times. after we would make crazy videos, like Noah and I like chilled like normal human beings. Of course, yeah. We don't just like, all right, stop recording. We just start sitting there and looking at the wall and like, yeah. not doing much. We had a good time over there. Dude, it was amazing. Back in San Diego, like after we'd finish filming, we'd hit the mall. We'd go to Dave & Buster's. My favorite thing we used to do was always playing 2K. Oh my god, the 2K bets. Yeah, we would the always bets do bets. The bets were crazy. Listen, we always used to do bets, whether it was playing 2K, ping pong, papa shot, basketball. Like, we would do challenges off camera. I yeah, think literally. that's why I do challenges a lot. We would... I think one of the best bets was, uh, I think, streaking down the street naked. At nighttime. At nighttime. Yo, we would go crazy with the bets because at one point, it's like, okay, we would do like little money bets. Like, okay, $50 for this game. And then we'd go to like a little higher. It's like, oh, 
go take a shot. Yeah, go take a shot of alcohol, <laughs> no chaser. Uh. And then we would go to the extremes of like, oh, like jump in the pool and it's yeah. cold outside. And this is all off camera, guys. Yeah, like, this is, we're not recording any of this. This, is, just... this is just shows you guys that <laughs> what we do on camera is also because we're having fun with it. Yeah. And that's what we do off camera. And then we would do bets <laughs> where we would like strip down. Like we would have our boxers on, but we would have to run down the street naked. <laughs> Dude, we would actually go so hard. But like, I feel like, I don't know. It was just fun. It like, was just a great time times. era. And like, not um, only would we play 2K though, I think we'd play like pop a shot. Like you ping said, pong, ping pong. Uh, there's like regular a Regular basketball. Yeah, there's so many things we used to play. Video games, uh, not just 2K, MLB the show. Oh my God. MLB takes me so far back. That's yeah, crazy. so... I don't know. It's just crazy. Like looking back at the memories, like, like finally having a friend to do that with, like yeah. I would always ask Brandon to do it, but he would always go to the gym. He would be busy. So like Getting having someone haircut. that's finally like by my side, it was like a great past two and a half years. So. Oh, it's like we were married. Hey. You're going to expose us. Hey, hey, we were supposed to get married in Vegas. If y'all didn't know that. Yeah, but things just went south. No, not even south. So here's the, I the idea that me and Brian had. Okay. So we were like, obviously we're in Vegas. Obviously, we're over 21. We're a few drinks in at the uh, the casino. And we were thinking like, yo, like, it'd be the craziest shit in the world if me and you kind of just got married and like actually got married. And it was a whole ass skit where like, I, I just fell in love with my cameraman. I'm so mad we didn't do that. Why don't we go back and do it? We could. It's a fucking hour flight. We can really just make <laughs> that happen. I don't care. Put a ring on my finger, my boy. I got you. Hey. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for questions of the week. Yes, sir. I, I love, love this. this segment so much because, you know, we get to interact with you guys, answer the questions that you guys want to know most, and we got some good ones. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So 7io.miguel asks, if you punch yourself and it hurts, are you weak or are you strong? <laughs> That's so dumb. I'm going to say I'm strong. <laughs> why? Because why not gas myself up? You I know like what I'm that. saying? I think... I'm both weak and strong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because like, I, yeah, like it's like I took the punch and it hurt, but then the punch was strong that it hurt. God, man. Miguel, <laughs> what is this, bro? What? Why did you confuse it just me hurt like your that? brain. <laughs> hey, th that's a good question. I don't know. I'm, I'm both weak and strong. <laughs> Augustine 14 asks, what favorite actor or actress would you want on AGU? Easy. Jessica Alba. Great one. You know who I want? No one would ever guess. Huh? Chris Tucker. Really? He's I funny. I love He's Chris so Tucker. He's so funny. He is so funny. And That's awesome. He was my favorite actor growing up from Rush Hour. Jesus Uzumaki 07 asks, what's your favorite movie? Ooh, I have one already. Go ahead. Well, I have a lot of different favorite movies, but the most recent one that caught my eye was called Boyhood. And it's literally a movie that took, I think, over 10 years to film or more. Because they had the same actors in it from when they were like seven years old. It's lit. Whoa. It's literally called Boyhood because it's like it shows the progress and like life of a regular boy going through life. All the way till he's like 21. Years? Yeah. Jeez, I she need was to check sick. that one it out. It was fire. How about um, you? So my old favorite movie uh -huh. or movie series was Rush Hour. Of course. We're talking all three of them. I think there was only three. That's a great series. But Chris Tucker, Jackie Chan, great combo. I love that movie. I watched it growing up with my family all the time. We yeah. rewatch them all the time too. But recently, this was like a year ago, I saw this movie on Netflix called What Happened to Monday. And it was intense. It was one of the actually like craziest movies I've ever seen. What is that about? So it's pretty much this alternate universe where – it's a world that's overpopulated uh -huh. and you can only have one kid. If you have more than one kid, one of them dies, right? What? Like they have to kill them. You can only have one kid. Holy shit. But this guy had seven identical twin girls and he named them after the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Damn. And they all had to look identical and they can only go out on that day of the week. So they had to wear the same wig, same hairstyle, same makeup, like, all that stuff and shit gets intense because you know something gets off like you know someone ha has like a scratch mark like you know what i mean like it's like Dude. it gets crazy and i personally recommend that that's movie a crazy concept. i don't want to spoil it but it was wow. crazy tbt underscore est xx38 asks who's the most entertaining phase member other than you or brian hey dude stop it oh hey i have a top three there's no way that i could do just one let's hear it so my top three would have to be Adapt. Okay. He's just a funny ass guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
a newer one, Swag. Okay. And, you know, it's just different than making YouTube videos because he's a streamer, but he's so funny. He's chalked. He's always bugging. <laughs> and, you know, he always gets turned up. Yes, yeah, facts. So, Swag, <laughs> Adapt, and then Rain. I'm going to have to throw Norton in there, of course, because growing up even being in phase i yeah. always looked up to norton he would post like three videos a day he would have like two separate channels like he was a grinder and i would always look up to him i'd like you know he would make a cut com i'm like dude i need to make a cut com and yeah like, i would just like be so inspired by his work and he was just super entertaining and everyone knows that norton is one of the main reasons that phase blew up so that's my top three. Wow. I know you grew up watching Phase. Yeah. So we got to hear your top three. Okay. Exclude other, me. Okay. I was about to say other me. than you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to stick to my OG three because I like thinking that that was my like prime time when I watched Phase. So I'm going to say Blaziken when nice. he used to make vlogs back in the day. I loved his videos and like it was just like a natural like type of energy I got from him. Nice. I'm going to say Rain because I mean, dude, he grinded his ass off, posted what, like three videos a day that's on what I'm two saying. different channels fucking crazy and honestly tommy tommy whenever he posts he doesn't post much okay yeah. tommy posts fucking more <laughs> but um when he used to post i got like that genuine connection through videos like damn like that's relatable yeah. i can relate to this but yeah that's, that's a great theory. list thanks man hey let's go but it's so hard to pick three because no i know it's the like there's so many so big and like there's so many like newer members that join that i enjoy like like mew he's a great member um, you know, there's Mongrel. Like, there's so many Phase members that I personally enjoy. Nick Merks. Nick Merks is awesome. Like, I don't know. I love Phase. Phase for life. Phase up. Yeah. Martiffs asks, would you ever play Warzone with your fans? A billion percent. That'd be sick. Imagine squatting up and my fans carrying me to a dub. That would be awesome. And I'm honestly down for that. Like, I, I meet a lot of fans in public that say that. So, if we can run it up, I'm down. And speaking of which, I actually upgraded my gaming setup with the new HyperX mic. Oh, they're so fire. And it's actually insane. I have the Quadcast 4, which is amazing. The quality is super crisp. And the features on it are amazing. It actually has this thing where you could touch to mute. And the color will turn off. If the color is off, that means you're muted. And oh. if the color is on, that means you're in business. You know how many times I used to record COD videos and my mic was off and I had oh, no that's idea? that's so annoying. So that just alerts you and makes sure that you will record and not have any issues. And it also has a pop filter. And if you have any background noise, whether you're typing on a keyboard, you know, your PC is making a loud noise, the pop filter literally prevents that. If you don't want the Quadcast 4, you can actually upgrade to a better one, the Quadcast S. Oh, I heard that one's good. It that has a lot of customizable things like RGB lighting, a bunch of giant upgrades. Say and less. It's amazing. If you like have like a RGB like I feel like that's the wave right now. Like that's what I'm everyone saying. has RGB like mouse pads, like mice. Now it's mics. That's sick. That's what I'm saying. Shout out to HyperX for sponsoring this. I'm super excited to be working with them because I only put my name on things that I actually use and we can go up to my gaming room right now and show you guys I have a HyperX mic. Yeah. <laughs> and it's fire. I'm going to start recording more gaming videos streaming. So once again, shout out to HyperX. I love you guys and you guys should definitely check them out. Master Good asks, who's your favorite NBA player? And I'm talking all-time and current. Okay. You, you wanna, go first. Okay. Uh, Kobe, all-time. Okay. Currently? It's so hard. Damn. That's, like, one of the hardest things to just choose one. Like, that's impossible. I'm going to think, like, play style. I'm just going to say Curry. I've always liked Curry. I love his jump shot. So clean. Like, I don't know. Curry for sure. So inspirational, man. Yeah. Um, all time for me, Kobe Bryant. Everyone knows that's my favorite player. Rest in peace. Legend. Uh, current. There's so many good players this season. They're back from injuries. <sighs> Caruso. I was thinking more of like a, like Zach Randolph. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, Hey, no disrespect to them though. Obviously. <laughs> I love you guys. Guys, just like the phase members, I have to do a top three. Okay. And this is still going to be difficult. Yeah. So... I love Curry. All right. Curry is amazing. I, I When I watch him play, it makes me want to play basketball. So he's number one. Number two, I love LeBron James. All right. LeBron James. LeBron James. <laughs> uh, the great, great NBA player. Legend. And the third one, it's, a, it's, like it's between like, like five or six right now. I'm going to have to go with Kevin Durant. Okay. The Durantula, man. I feel like I'm built like him. No, I'm built like him. I Not like... you. I'm built like him. Okay, okay. A lot of people tell me I play like Kevin Durant, especially when I dunk. <laughs> you Okay, yeah. stop. 
Dude, I don't know. There's so many like Kyrie Irving, Jason Tatum. I Devin know there's Booker. a lot of players. Oh my god, oh. the NBA is stacked right now. I Clay forgot. Thompson is back. Devin oh. Booker, dude, he's damn. I like forgot. Devin Booker is, Devin Booker is literally like it's it's hard to compare someone to Kobe, but like he's on that track. Play to style like... is literally reminds me of Kobe. Yeah. So I'm gonna swap out Kevin Durant with Devin Booker because I just remembered. Okay, okay. Like I think okay, so Curry, Curry, LeBron, and Devin Booker. That's it. That wraps up All Grown Up, episode four. If you guys made it all the way to the end, let me remind you about the giveaway we talked about. We're flying out two fans, a boy and a girl. If you can answer all the questions right on the quiz that is going to be up on all All Grown Up socials. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you're following all the social media. Yes, please. And I want to fly out two people. I'm super excited. And we're actually changing how we do this. Instead of dropping the YouTube video at the same time as the audio, we're going to drop the audio only first and let all those people listen. Because guys, we got to run up the numbers, man. We got to yes. run up our podcast to number one. I've seen new podcasts start take over on like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We gotta show them what's good, all right? Yo, listen, run up the numbers, get us to the number one in the world. That's where I'm aiming at. Hey, if we're going to the number one in the world, I'll love you guys so much. And once again, keep supporting us on YouTube, keep supporting us on the podcasting platforms, and we just love seeing you guys here. Yes. Thank you guys, and we'll see you guys with episode five next week. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace out.